Welcome back to my channel. My last review video has received a fair amount of attention, and I thought that it might be a good time to release another review video. Today I will be reviewing the King James Study Bible, 2nd edition. Here we are going to be going through it. It is by Thomas Nelson, and this will be the Bonded Leather edition. So, as we did in our previous video, we are going to introduce you to the box, then we are going to introduce you to the Bible, and then we are going to introduce you to the content. And I hope that you will find it enlightening and educational. So, here we have our close-up of the Bible in its box, and this Bible here is a second edition, so this was released, or should I say published, in 2013, I believe it was. We are going to go over this together in great detail. So here we have the case, the outer cover of the study Bible, and I hope that you will forgive me for, at times I may be disoriented, this is a Dif difficult camera angle to master. So this is the Thomas Nelson King James Study Bible 2nd Edition. <clears throat> we have, to begin with, a very decorative case. This is simple cardboard with a viewing window of plastic, see-through plastic. But the pattern on the outside is a beautiful red floral design with golden engravings at the top and bottom of this band which says the King James Study Bible 2nd Edition. At the back, or uh, apologies, at the bottom we have Nelson KJV, we have Signature Series, Enduring Truth, Timeless Beauty, The Authority for Over 25 Years, now in its second edition. That's referring to the study Bible itself. The company itself has been established in 1798, according to the information present. What we have <coughs> is the viewing window here gives you a good view of the bonded leather, which is the edition that I have received here, or should I say uh, purchased, but the the uh, edition that I have chosen. <clears throat> and on the side here we have, as you can see, Thomas Nelson, King James Study Bible, second edition, with the KJV at the top. On the other side here, which you will see we have the same situation here. Beautiful red floral design on the back. Let's see here. <laughs> Sorry about this. Let's see. There we are. It says free Bible study tools download. Now I have not personally taken advantage of that. The King James Study Bible. The best selling study Bible in the King James Version. Now updated with added features. Uh, trusted for over 25 years, the King James Study Bible has, uh, let's see, dependable notes and annotations from scholars you can rely on, led by general editor Edward Hinson. A clear presentation of conservative Bible doctrine with the resources you need for knowing God's Word. That is what it is written right here in the band. The King James Study Bible sold to date more than 2.4 million. And then we have some information about the company here. Now this particular box is a rather simple one. It comes apart in two pieces like so. Inside the box, the King James Study Bible sits quite comfortably. There is very little additional space here. 
so we are going to remove the Bible now from the box. Now before we get into the details of the Bible itself, let's talk a bit about the Bible. I have some information for you. Uh, number one, its publication date was the 29th of October, 2013. Its weight, the Bible itself, is 1,486 grams. With the box, it's about 1,504 grams. The dimensions of the Bible are 178 millimeters, I believe that is going this way, then it is 254 millimeters, and it is 50 millimeters thick. The format of the Bible is leather. It is bonded leather. It is 200, or my apologies, it is 2,000. 240 pages, and it is a large print edition. Okay, so that seems to be some good information. Uh, some extra information here. It has book introductions and outlines provided, a concise overview of the background and historical context of the book about to read. 5,700 authoritative and study notes for a better understanding of the passage being read. It has center column references with translation notes allow you to find related passages quickly and easily. 48 revised in-text maps and charts show a visual representation of locations and themes in the Bible. Archaeological notes draw attention to biblical places and related archaeological discoveries. Personal profiles give overviews of key men and women in the Bible. Notes on Christian Doctrines for a Systematic Study of Themes in God's Word. Easy to Navigate Topical Indexes, Word Study Concordance for Looking Up a Word's Occurrences Throughout the Bible. Index of Christ and the Gospels. Index of Paul and His Letters. Index of Bible Prophecy, and it is 11-point print size. Okay, now, with the help of some good editing, I hope to have shown you everything while I was reading it. But now we are going to return to the foundation of our Bible review, the study Bible here. It is silver edges here, which I hope you can understand that. It is very nice, beautiful silver uh, edges here. The edge came in very good condition when I received it. There was no there was no scratches or anything of that sort on my edges when I received it. Let's talk about the bonded leather here for a moment. Now, you perhaps can see that it is quite an interesting uh, Bible cover. The bonded leather will cost more than other types. I believe there is a hardback edition of the exact same Bible as well. I went for the bonded leather because I have never had anything in bonded leather. And many people would perhaps say that bonded leather is just not as durable, not as solid, but I have had no issues with bonded leather. Now, I tend to treat my study Bible here rather gingerly, so I am quite gentle with it, but perhaps if you are transporting it around in your bag, 
with no box, you may see some damage. The leather itself, I'm not crazy about bending things, like rolling it up, but it, it bends, it's pretty good. Uh, on the spine here, we have the presentation, the King James Study Bible 2nd Edition, at the top, Holy Bible, and at the bottom, the Thomas Nelson uh, stamp. And on the back, we have the number here, which you can see. And on the front, of course, we have Holy Bible. Now, this is a study Bible. It is well, nearly 2,000 pages, or more, 2,240 pages, which is a fair number. Now, we are going to go inside this Bible together. Okay, we have the Bible open here, and the folds of the bonded leather at the corners looks quite reasonable, which you can perhaps see there. It is not going to be a hundred folds per corner, but it gets the job done. And then we have, I believe this to be a paste down liner, a very simple design here. Uh, this page here seems to be just a standalone page. It does not have, it does not have the band going here for added strength that I can tell. And on the other side, just a rather thicker piece of paper with a gloss on one side, a black gloss. Now we go here, we have our, I suppose this is the presentation page itself. A very nice sort of a sand color, I suppose, presented to, presented by, date and occasion. I have not filled it out personally. Let's see here, then we have the King James Study Bible 2nd Edition. Now we're getting into the lighter paper, the thinner paper here. Then we have again the Study Bible 2nd Edition. And then we have, on this side here, we have our information, which I will try to get some close-ups, of course. The King James Study Bible, 2nd edition, copyright 1988. That must have been the date of the original Study Bible's publication. And let's see, what else do we have here? Just uh, good information. Now we have a foreword by Edward Hinson, which I will not read to you currently, but it is good background. I always enjoy reading the information that they give us the um, background, you could say. Then we have our Dear Reader, which I do believe comes from the company itself. We have con Contributing Editors, which there are a fair number. Let's see. General Editor, Contributing Editors. And then we get into the content. So the content, we have Dear Reader, Contributing Editor, Books of the Old and New Testament, How to Use the King James Study Bible, Introduction to Doctrinal Footnotes, How to Study the Bible, God's Answer to Our Concerns, Introduction of the Old Testament, then we have the Old Testament, Between the Testaments, Harmony of the Gospel, Introduction to the New Testament, then we have the New Testament, Topical Index of Christ and the Gospels, then we have Teachings and Illustrations of Christ, Parallels of Christ, or I'm sorry, it's Parables of Christ, Christ, Miracles of Christ, Prophecies of the Messiah Fulfilled in Christ, Topical Index of Paul and His Letters, Topical Index, uh, sorry, I'm reading it upside down here, Topical Index to End Time Prophecy, uh, monies, weights, and measures, the Jewish calendar, prayers of the Bible, index to annotations, doctrinal footnotes, personality profiles, and archaeological sites. Then we have King James con 
accordance with original language word studies, and then finally maps. Do we have any more? No. So now we have our books of the Bible here. They are in chronological order here, rather than alphabetical. And then we have the books of the New Testament. Now, how to use... This is a good guide for you. We have a few sort of uh, interesting features of this particular Bible. We have an example of a single passage here, which will have the verse number, and then we will have letters included. So three other special helps are unique to this Bible. So we have our first help, I suppose, would be the explanation. Doctrinal footnotes. So at the bottom here, we can see a box which says the Holy Spirit in creation. And it's going to explain some details about the Holy Spirit in creation. So doctrinal footnotes introduce you to a systematic study of the Bible's teachings. Look forward, uh, sorry, look toward the bottom of the page to find gray boxes with the key symbol. So it will have a literal symbol of a key. And what else do we have here? We have a second um, key feature, which is a personality profile. So, at the top here. I will try to add this in after the fact. So, personality profile describes key men and women of the Bible. Look toward the bottom of the page to find gray boxes with the profile symbol, which is a profile of a person's head. Then our third key feature is an archaeological site. Focus on significant places mentioned in the Bible and archaeological findings related to them. Look toward the bottom of the page to find gray boxes with the shovel symbol, and it will have a picture of a shovel. So next we are going to go into details about how to navigate the page here. So on the page you can see many red lines. I will be zooming into all of these. So we will have the verse number, which will go to a center column reference of that verse number. So it, here we're in Acts 13.36 for our example page. And it says 13.29 a Luke 1831. So the letter is referring to an alternative passage. So we have our letters here, and then we also have a number. Let's see here. The number is referring to an alternative word. Let's see here. I can tell you. A superior numeral indicates an equivalent translation, alternative translation, literal translation, language note, or explanatory note. So we have superior letters, a blob face reference, and a superior numeral. I'll just give you the explanation of the, the letter. It is a superior letter preceding the word or phrase in the text indicates a cross-reference. And for our verse itself here, it says a blob face reference in the center column indicates the chapter and verse to which an entry applies. So very good. And then we have an example of a map which may appear on any page if it is applicable. And it says, in-text map highlights important biblical, sorry, Bible events. Okay, so we have here uh, Paul's journey. Okay. So, next up, we have some more interesting things. We have an equivalent translation, which 
is including the number. So the number is saying it is an equivalent translation. We have a square bracket. Square bracket around a cross-reference. Mark it as a conce let's see, conceptual cross-reference, which identifies a passage similar in concept to the referenced passage in the text. Very good. We have a literal translation. We have an explanatory note. We have a language note. We have an alternative translation. Okay, those are mainly concerned with there being a number here, except for the square brackets, which is its own type of reference uh, study tool. Then we have subject headings. So some Bibles have it, some Bibles do not. I'll try to zoom it in, but it will be a thick, uh, bold word at the top of an area that tells you the subject of those passages. Red letter type is used in the New Testament to signify the words of Jesus Christ. An italic type in the text indicates words that the original text do not contain, but which English requires for clarity. So, I imagine you may already know that, but when we use italics in regular uh, writings of our modern day, it has a different usage. But here it is supporting words for the grammar. Then we have special abbreviations, which are at the bottom of this page. Following that, we have doctrinal footnotes. Very, very useful here. This is very good uh, subject. You go there to find the relevant passages. So, for example, we have Gospel. 1 Corinthians 15.1. So let me go to 1 Corinthians 15.1, which we are going to jump over there. Let's see, 1 Corinthians 15.1, which is right here. So 15.1 here, it says, and I am reading it upside down, so I really do apologize if I and making ish errors. So, 15.1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Okay, so that was a good example of doctrinal footnotes. It is very useful, especially if you don't read Continuously, you may forget certain key verses that help to strengthen the faith. So, this is certainly a good, uh, what would you call it, a go-to place if you think uh, what is important to know about the flesh. So, then you would go to Romans 8.13, and then you would hear all about it. Okay, so let's see here, and they continue on for, it is two and a half pages, we'll say. Then we have how to study the Bible, which will go into different ways for you to interpret the information. So what are you attempting to get is how you study. So study for Bible knowledge. We have... Uh, let's see here, personal Bible study, devotional Bible study. For Bible knowledge, we have here, let's see. Mm, that looks pretty good. Okay. Family Bible study, there's also that. There's principles of Bible interpretation and such. So after that, we have God's answers. This is good. Uh, very similar to the doctrinal footnotes we had previously, which I will go back to. So doctrinal footnotes, we had subject, and then we had rele uh, relevant verse. 
For here we have God's answers to our concerns. We have subject and relevant verses. We have multiple verses for each situation here. So we have satisfaction in God. We have self-denial. It is alphabetical order. We have division, doubt, dying to live. Very interesting here. So then we jump into the Old Testament. And what do we have? An introduction to the Old Testament book. Well, here it is to the Old Testament. But after the introduction to the Old Testament, then we have an introduction to the book of Genesis. So the introduction will be reasonably interesting, and you may find some good points in it. It will give you some dates, some other key details, and then it will have outline of uh, Genesis here, which goes through the verse numbers and kind of tells you what the subject is for each of those. And then we get into the actual book of Genesis, which will contain one large numeral, which is in a deep red color. And that signifies which chapter we're on. And the dividing lines of the book are in red, so there will be a thin red line which divides the text from the explanation, the explanation from the study tip there about what the particular subject is. So we have, again, the Holy Spirit in creation. At the bottom here, we have image, or sorry, the image and likeness of God. So it will give you that information. It's not every page, but it is... It is uh, reasonable when a new person comes into the Bible uh, for us to read about, then usually we get an introduction to that person. Then at the end of the Bible, and I do flip chunks at a time. It's not that I think that the end is in the middle. It's just I want to treat the Bible rather gently. Okay, so at the end of the Bible, after the final chapter of Revelation, we have, let's see here, Christ and the Gospels. So we are going to see this here. It is an index of his life, and we are going to see some teachings here. It is a topical index. Let's see. So we have a uh, subject here, denial or deny. It is, let's see, a conversation. Jesus participates, sorry, a conversation. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Matthew 26, 31 to 35. Mark 14 to 27 to 31. Luke 22, 31 to 38. And John 13, 31 to 38. So it will do this for every subject included here. Following this, we have the teachings and illustrations of Christ. And this is alphabetical order. It will have a word or a group of words, and then it will have the relevant passage here. Some will have more passages than others. For example, earth. Let's see here. So earth is here. So that is Matthew 5, 18. Following this, we have parables of Christ. This is very valuable, I would say, because it is giving to you every parable, and it tells you exactly which book they're found in. So... We have Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and if a parable is in multiple books, such as the sower, we have Matthew 13, 3 to 23, Mark 4, 2 to 20, we have Luke 4, sorry, 8, 4 to 15. Okay, now this particular page does not include John, but the next page does include John in the 
trough here in the gully of the Bible. So it is very good. And then we have prophecies of the Messiah's fulfillment. This is very good. I find it to be a very good go-to. Just you can quickly see every single reference of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. So Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy heel, and, or sorry, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And then it says, seed of a woman, Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So, very good. Following that, which goes on for a time, it is very good. I quite enjoy having details like that. Then we have Paul and his letters, which will have the same sort of situation here, the subject, and then we have the reference verse, or multiple verses. Okay. So, index to Paul. Index to prophecy here. This is a good part. So, end time prophecies. We have all the aspects included in the end time prophecy, and we have some relevant scripture here, relevant verses. So, for demon or demons, we have fallen angel, we have Revelation 12 9. So, if you ever want to find a specific part or to see it at least in a reasonable order here, then you can find it. Events that unfold. So we're going to have events that unfold as well. Judgments from God. Locations. Armageddon. Babylon. Bottomless pit. God's throne. Heaven. And hell. Okay. Let's see, promises and rewards to the victors, and the signs of the times. And then we have what believers should do in the meantime. Here's a good one. Be sober, be ready, be patient, be watchful, endure till the end. Then we have our monies, weights, and measures. This is very useful, of course. Uh, the money value, I think... It may be outdated. Time changes these sort of things. But it gives you a rough estimate of perhaps what each thing is worth. And then it will give you also its measurement compared to other measurements. For example, the talent here, uh, shekel. Let's see. So a shekel is four days wages. It is two bekas. It is 20 grands or Gerens, or Geras, I'm sorry if I am uh, mispronouncing that. Following that, we have Jewish calendar, which is good for you to know, prayers of the Bible, index to annotations, which is handy enough, we'll just jump ahead here, Concordance, which goes on for a fair time. The concordance is a reasonable size here. I think it's actually very reasonable. Let's see. We can get the official length of the concordance if I am able to get to the end of it. Let's see. So it goes from... It's a very... Perhaps you'll be surprised. The concordance goes from page 2012 to the page 2207. So nearly 200 pages of concordance, which is very uh, good here. And then finally, at the end of the Bible, or the study Bible, we have our list of maps. Now, there are maps in the Bible which I will show you an example of. But for color maps, we have a few. You will, 
probably see these maps in pretty much any Bible from Thomas Nelson, I believe. These are rather the standard color maps. So we have the, let's see, the world of the patriarchs. We have here the exodus from Egypt. And this one here is something indeed. Um, some Bibles will have other alternative routes, which is something. Then we have the conquest of Canaan. We have David and Solomon's Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the New Testament. We have the Twelve Tribes. We have the Holy Land of the Times of Jesus. And then we have Paul's um, missions, I suppose you could say. Missionary journeys. And that is the Bible. Or should I say the study Bible. Now, it is advised that you handle the Bible occasionally because your oils from your skin are good for the bonded leather so you will see that that is um, requested of you if you would like to maintain it for a longer period of time but you don't need to handle it as often as you may think depending on your environment so that concludes our walkthrough of the contents of the study Bible. Now we will conclude the video with a couple points, personal points, that I would like to give you. Uh, things that I don't like about this particular study Bible, and things that I do like about this particular study Bible. And then we will finish with the, should you have the study Bible? Is it something that I would recommend you to have? So, to begin with... The bonded leather <clears throat> is, I would say, quite good. Uh, much better than you might think, considering that I've had this particular study Bible for multiple years and I see no evidence of it coming apart. It is not as simple as uh, you may imagine. So bonded leather is no problem for this Bible. In fact, I think it is a cost-effective way to ha have reasonably good presentation and it certainly looks quite unique. So, I believe this to be uh, a good addition to the study Bible, the bonded leather. So, the Bible itself, when I first received it, it was in, I believe it to be perfect condition. There was no issue with any pages in the entire Bible. The lining on the pages, the silver lining, was just fantastic. It still is. And the Bible itself, I should mention, it comes with one ribbon. A single ribbon. This ribbon is reasonably long, so if you happen to be working on two places at the same time, you can fold it over and tuck it into the second place that you may be reading. Uh, just be cautious when you're opening it. But that is something that I have done as well. There is plenty of space, plenty of length at the bottom to fold it over to any point in the Bible. Uh, a few things that I don't like, which I will start with the things I don't like. A few things that I don't like are the alternative words. I am not a fan of alternative words. I am a firm believer in the exact wording that was chosen when the King James Bible was translated. And any alternative word I tend to view as even going so far as changing the context of the entire passage. So I am a big uh, disliker 
of alternative words. Uh, many of the alternative words, I think, do just do not add to my learning. Sometimes the alternative word is an explanatory word, so it will explain the word in question. And that is something that perhaps you can appreciate. But if it is alternative, I am not a great fan of that. Uh, a couple other things would be the alternative passages. The, or should I say the related verses. I'm not too crazy about related verses in anything other than a dedicated, um, what would you call it here, uh, I suppose, a, a dedicated Bible just for uh, jumping from pa uh, verse to verse. I, I take it with a grain of salt. Usually they are lacking. This one is better, I should say, than if you get what they call a reference Bible or what have you. Usually the references are quite lacking. Uh, these are better than that, that is for sure, but I don't use it for that. So, I, I do not use the related verses uh, section of the center column to the fullest, I will admit that. The alternative words, I do not, I don't like them, but I read every single one to confirm my um, suspicion of alternative words changing contexts. But uh, I will not give you an example of that. I don't think that it is right to uh, dive too deeply into my own personal displeasures or dissatisfactions. It is a personal thing, and I'm not against other translations or other versions, or if you like that sort of thing, I think it's perfectly fine. It's just a personal preference for me. So. These are small things that I don't like, but let me tell you about the things that I greatly like. I greatly like the study notes at the bottom of the page, the, uh, the context notes, you could say. These are incredibly detailed. I can't say that I agree with every single thing I read in the study notes, and that's not a problem, because it's very unlikely that you're ever going to find a single study Bible that you agree with everything. Um, that's no issue, but the vast majority of these uh, context study notes are very valuable, because they, they provide you context of what's going on. They will give you a, a sort of... Um, encompassing view of that particular era, that particular situation. They will tell you about some background about who you're talking about, uh, which peoples, what about their background, or how long was it when this happened, because sometimes it uh, does not explain. So this specific thing I quite enjoy because when you're reading through the Bible, of course, you are getting the direct perspective of the Bible, but the study notes will often come to that perspective from an alternative position, and it will help to strengthen your understanding. So the, the uh, background, what did they call them here, sorry? Uh, they called them archaeological notes, personality profiles. And, let's see here, doctrinal footnotes. I found them to be quite helpful when we first meet a person in the Bible. It will say, Jonathan, eldest son of Saul, the first king of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. Initially, Jonathan served as Saul's right-hand man and lieutenant. And then it will give you the verses in which that is applicable. And it will go through the chapters, and it will go through the books. It'll say, he was athletic and brave, verse 13, or 2 Samuel 1, to 27. So we're talking about 1 Samuel when we meet Jonathan, but it will also say, oh, Jonathan was also in 2 Samuel, and 
he had these attributes. So I greatly like that. I think that is fantastic. I, I am very pleased with that. The book introductions are good, I think, overall. Uh, they will have things such as historical settings, they will have a background of the era, of the time, what's going on. Um, oftentimes we view the Bible as a standalone um, set of books, which is exactly how it should be. But it also has great historical context. And oftentimes the Bible does not portray itself as a world history book. So uh, the introduction to the books will give you some world history. They'll say, this was happening at this time. This place is located at this place. Uh, the thing that I, I can't say I pay much attention to would be authorship. I'm, I'm not much for um, authorship, personally. I... I don't want to go in debating who wrote what and did this person write this or was it someone else. I don't even touch it. I read it, but I don't want to touch it with my mind. So, overall, I would say that this Bible is, this study Bible, is a good study Bible. Who do I think this study Bible is good for? I would say this study Bible is good for someone who is growing in their faith from a young place. They are young in their faith. The study notes will nudge you very gently in a good direction, I would say. You will use your, I suppose, your um, intuition in your own... Um, you will use your own mind to uh, sift through what is agreeable and what you may not find agreeable. But many things in the study notes you will probably think, Oh, I never thought about it like that. Or, Oh, wow, I'm starting to see the connection. So, I would say that this is a good study Bible. Uh, as I say, of course, you're not going to agree with everything in every study Bible. And that's no problem. It's fine. Um, the things usually I find people don't agree on are oftentimes not... They, they're not very relevant to a person's faith or saving faith. So um, I have no issue with agreeing to disagree on many things um, in that regard. Because it is not relevant to our saving faith. So, I would say that this is a good Bible, a uh, study Bible, sorry, to have. And I think that you should get it in hardcover. If I could suggest you to get it, I would suggest it in hardcover. And the reason that I would suggest it in hardcover is not because I don't like bonded leather. It's not because I don't think bonded leather is good quality. It's because bonded leather is slightly more expensive, and I believe that you should have many study Bibles. You should have more than a few study Bibles. And the reason I say hardcover is because I believe a person should keep their costs low, as low as they can, while getting the valuable insights from the study Bible. So, I think you should get it. If you get it in bonded leather, great. But I think you should get three study Bibles instead of two by getting the uh, cheaper edition of each, such as the hardcovers. So, since I have bought this particular study Bible, I have bought other study Bibles in hardcover uh, because I I think that in the long run, I would just prefer to uh, use the saved money towards more study. So, that concludes my review and in-depth, I suppose you could say my in-depth walkthrough 
of the, uh, let's see here, the Thomas Nelson King James Study Bible 2nd Edition. I hope that you found this to be valuable, and I sincerely apologize for any mistakes I may have made. I'm not very good at reading upside down, so please forgive me for that. Uh, thank you very much for coming to my channel. I know that I have received a few subscribers for a single Bible review, and I want to uh, express to my subscribers that I am not just a one-review channel. I do want to release more content, and I'm very thankful that you are coming to my channel to see the Bible and perhaps to consider my personal opinions. So thank you very much, and have a nice day.